Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, it's going to be a match between Shuttle and C here on Fighting Spirit. Top right hand corner, the Orange Terran player C. A former StarCraft pro gamer from Korea who played Terran for Team 8. Currently plays in amateur leagues, and in the bottom left hand corner, it is the White Protoss player Shuttle. All right, so a PVT here between these two players. I have cast two games of Seas on this channel. One, a 42-minute PVT that is a epic, epic match. I'll put it in the description if you'd like to check that out. And I'm currently casting four Brood War matches on my channel every single week, up from three. And I have some news. If you want a fifth Brood War match cast by Falcon Paladin every single week, all you have to do is head over to patreon.com slash falconpaladin and subscribe to me over there for one dollar a month. It'll get you access to one Brood War cast, not on the YouTube channel per week. That is like a quarter a cast, you guys. A quarter a cast. That's all it takes. That is the best value in the entire world for Brood War cast, as far as I know. <laughs> Alright, so Gateway coming up here from shuttle no barracks here from C yet come on C a little bit worried about you buddy your APM is looking good but what are you doing with it you have enough resources to make a barracks but are you no you're not going command center first are you come here little guy come here SCV holy cannoli okay he's not for a second there looked like he was saving up those resources to go for a command center first against shuttle which would have been real gutsy and I kind of would have liked it but it didn't work out it didn't work out for him in the end there and said he did go Instead, for the barracks down on the low ground, I'm just kind of trying to mess up zealot pathing. I think this is what this is for, as early zealot pressure is definitely a thing. Sure, marines are ranged and they're very good against zealots, but it takes a lot of micro to take them down. And while you're shooting them, they're also hacking away at your SCVs. And if you just wall them off, it's a much better situation here. And honestly, if you play against Protoss AI in StarCraft Bird War, they will just send like seven gates worth of zealots at you off of one base. And can be hard to deal with, even if you're Terran, but uh, bunkers help a lot there. Fire bats and bunkers are great, at least in that situation. You don't see it much here uh, in this setup in a real-life game, just because Dragoons, again, are a thing, and fire bats really lose their effectiveness once Dragoons come out to play. So we probably won't see that here, but I just remember, just remember really struggling against that. And then I read on some website back in 1998, 1999, that really what you want to do are bunkers with fire bats. And it was a good tip. It was a good little early pro tip there. First one I think I ever read uh, in my StarCraft career. There's your command center in a weird position. Did he mess this up? Did he build his barracks in a weird spot so the command center can't be where it needs to be? Or did he do it for a wall off because he's worried about this early zealot pushing up? The thing is, the zealot is scouting and is not going to find the cross bond position uh, for C here for quite some time. So I don't know if this is entirely necessary. It was cautious. And I guess that's kind of smart, but overall, I don't know, man. Nobody's found anybody right now. There is an SCV scouting, but has got to the top left instead of the bottom left, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at this point, we're getting close to finding each other. Dragoon moving out. SCV says, ow, ow, ow. And the Dragoon, the SCV is pushing along as fast as his little jetpack can get him. He's not walking, guys. You'll notice he doesn't have wheels and he's not using his feet. Oh, is that a block? Holy smokes, that's a block. Nice pro block. No scouting for you. You will not see my utter lack of nothing up here. Or he did actually notice a lack of expansion. So it's a one base opener here out of shuttle. Expansion goes down. The barracks moves. That's the nice thing about being Terran is you can move your buildings around if you put them in the wrong spot. And now a bunker full of three marines means our friend the zealot really can't get through here. Dragoon pushing up. Another dragoon pushing up. Singularity charge is like 80% complete. And now let's let the harassment begin. Oh my gosh. Is that your factory? Dang, the factory is just now getting started. That is so bad for C. They're going to be Dragoons here with range in just a couple of seconds. And they're going to knock down that bunker. At the very least, they're going to force you to bring SCBs off the line to repair it. And then at that point, you're just toast. Honestly, walking past this might be a not a bad option. With the number of gateway units that are out here. Where is this SCB going? And where is this Zealot going? I think the SCB wants to know if this is dedicated pressure or if this is just like a nominal thing. Ooh, I don't know if he saw that coming up. I do not know if he caught a glimpse of that or not. And here we go. Dragoons with range just in the right position here to hack away. Well, blast away at this bunker is probably the right word for that. 
the factory is is the factory done by golly the factory is done machine shop coming up star port finishing here too about 50 percent complete and robotics facility down here in protoss land as the Rudigoons go to town on this bunker so i think it just came a little bit too late the prep dude you gotta repair it though guys you are okay at least one of them is three come down to deal with the three dragoons it's a situation these players have practice against time and time again and actually double expanding shuttle here at his natural base and at that third base location i kind of like it he one bases a little bit get some pressure on the terran and then double expands behind it while the terran can't really move out because of these dragoons and the siege mode yep siege mode coming in and a tank in production scvs are losing mining time and they are using a lot of minerals to make sure this bunker doesn't fall because if this bunker falls everybody dies P pushing up trying to pick off some scvs before the tank shows up can't quite do it nice control there actually oh he loaded oh <laughs> he loaded the scv in and then it popped it out and it got killed anyway that hurts that hurts quite a bit there all right well the tank is here and yeah the dragoons are like well siege can't be too far behind and in fact it is not because there it is that's one of my favorite sounds in all of starcraft is the sound of a siege tank going into siege mode just mm, makes me happy even though i do main zerg it makes me happy to see that additional gateways coming up here and yeah as i've said if you want to take down a terran player as protoss after they go mech it's really hard to do but if you out macro them right you get that third base up earlier than anybody ever expects you to you start making dragoons by the tens and by the dozens and you get zealots in there you get some marcons in the mix for stasis sword and you're not going to be cost efficient with your engagements which is really weird because against zerg you are very cost efficient but against terran you can't really afford to be you just got to throw your stuff over and over at that wall and against those units and then eventually the trades will work out in your favor because you have more stuff because you got three bases and the terran has two that's how we saw it. we saw a protoss player take down flash you guys using that exact same strategy it went to like four five six bases very early risked it and it totally paid off for him it was kind of incredible i'm not sure if i could find the link to that uh oh actually i can i can find the link to that if you want that let me know in the comments and i'll toss it in because i'll forget by the time this goes live but check this action out bit of a tank vulture drop here inside the third base there's nothing protecting these probes at all and this is the problem with risking with risking it and going for this early base is you maybe don't have the ability to cover all of these situations where is your observer i saw the observatory there's an observer on the way oh man tanks trying to take this uh this base down coming on in with a couple vultures into the main base now they're gonna drop behind this mineral line and actually you had to cancel that pylon because otherwise you wouldn't be able to kill these vultures that easily and yeah probes are getting picked off a lot here c is looking very very good gonna lose both of those vultures and attack at the front door with dragoons or uh, rather a defense of the front door with dragoons <laughs> And they do pick off the dropship, but there are spider mines everywhere. The tank has not quite taken down this third base, but he's darn near working on it. There's a single zealot in a shuttle that is trying to deal with this, which is kind of hilarious. Dragoons do have detection. The observer comes in. And I think at this point, the best the siege tank can open for is to wound this base enough to where a drop later on will kill it. And there it goes the tank is out but it did some work here that is a very injured very on fire third nexus observer crews out to see how many spider mines there are on the map and there are a bunch there are a bunch as additional factories keep getting made here by seas going for armories additional upgrades he is working on an additional drop ship he wants to do more drop play which i kind of like here i know shuttle's name is shuttle but he's not actually making any shuttles at this stage of the game it is pretty much entirely all drop ships out of the terran player Dragoons going on mine clearing expeditions now that they have range and an observer. I guess they've had range for a while, but the observer is more key here. And the vultures, do they have speed yet? I don't think they have speed yet. They're not moving quickly enough to where I think they have speed. Hard to know though, they kind of keep stopping to do stuff here. Anyway, the vultures are going to try to dive in while the dragoons are out of position. Actually, they thought about it and decided, nah, let's not do that instead. Hey, there is a shuttle here. I guess there was the one shuttle, but it's used more in a defensive capability than an offensive capability. Observer comes in and says, I mean, I'm sure this is mech, but let's do some scouting just to make sure. And by golly, it is already four factories. Third base is done and protected by four siege tanks on the right side here by C. So C is catching up economically here. Ooh, Fleet Beacon already on the way. Mm, we could see some early carriers here. Some like 10, 12 minute carriers. 
which I kind of like. The shuttles. Ooh, did he just unload a Zeppelin? What the was that? I don't know what that was, and I don't want to rewind, but I think a zealot, like, dropped down and then engaged all the spider mines and got picked up. So they all exploded, but the zealot survived. That's kind of incredible. What a great play there by Shuttle. I don't think I've ever seen that before, and I've cast a bunch of StarCraft, you guys, at this point, but, huh. File that one away for really, really cool moves, and look at that. Three carriers in production right now from the Protoss player at ten and a half minutes. That is some real fast carriers. Already Caron boosters, and we've got ourselves some Goliaths on the way from C. So he knows what's up. So the rest of this game really should just be a whole ton of uh, Goliath versus carrier strategy here. Everybody's favorite thing. It is pretty to look at. It's a lot of blue. A lot of glowy, like, dusty blue flying around here. Cloudy blues. I like the color blue. Maybe I'm biased that way, but... Anyway, did you know there's merch? You know there's Falcon Paladin merchandise as well? If you just search Falcon Paladin and Shopify in your Googles, or just go to Shopify.com and search Falcon Paladin, you will find the stuff with the Falcon logo on it. There are mugs, there are t-shirts and hats, and all sorts of great stuff that you would want to buy to support the channel and also to, to have Falcon Paladin stuff in your home. Right? It's a nice mug, by the way. There were some problems with it. Initially, when it was printed, the, uh, the logo was on the opposite side of the handle, and that was dumb, because who wants the logo... Who wants the image on their mug to be on the opposite side of where the handle is? I don't know, but it's definitely speed done for these vultures now. They are real, real zippy. And yeah, five Goliaths at a time being produced. They are starting to gather up here with their tank buddies at the natural base. We've got some Goliaths wandering over to the third base here too. Where are my carriers at? Carrier has arrived. He's trying to hide it back here, which is kind of funny. I mean, maybe it's a hiding thing, maybe it's a defending thing, but... Yeah, uh, C knows, dude. C is fully aware of what you're going for here, and he's preparing for it as best he knows how, as the Terran player that he is. Hmm. <laughs> Terran music. It's just the best. I don't know what else to tell you here. Oh man, this track takes me back to like first time I played the StarCraft 1 campaign, Terran campaign. Not quite sure what you're doing, but here's the engagement! Zealots and Dragoons! Tanks are not sieged, but now they are. And there's a lot of vultures in here, a ton of Goliaths. Turns out, Goliaths are pretty good against ground stuff too. They're not just amazing against air, they're also pretty darn decent at taking down Dragoons from distance, especially if they're being covered here by tanks. So heading up north, it looks like Shuttle has no interest in actually engaging with this army, and I can't necessarily blame him for it. Plus, one attack is done on these tanks. Uh, got ourselves no upgrades for the Ground Dragoon army quite yet. Plus, one armor or attack rather is on the way, and plus one air weapons. And our carrier fleet. Where is our carrier fleet? Well, here's one anyway. Oh, they're up here. They're hanging out. So it's 193 to 166 supply. Shuttle has been macroing his face off, and at 13 minutes, he's effectively maxed out. Which is hard to do in Brood War, you guys. You ever try it? You ever try to see how fast, uh, how long it takes you to max out in an actual game when you're being harassed and dealing with stuff? It's really difficult to do, but Shuttle, that's why he's one of the best. He even, in fact, has a Shuttle here with a single Zealot in it. Nobody going for a fourth base quite yet. Everybody pretty content to sit on their three. We got missile turrets up. That is a fourth command center, though. Yeah, so C's building one to probably toss up here to the 12 o'clock position at some point. But for now, we're just kind of dancing back and forth across the middle of the map here. Nobody can really see anybody necessarily. Scans are happening. I assume there's an observer over here somewhere, and by golly, there is. A couple observers, actually, checking that fourth base, and a fourth base comes up in response to the top left. Nexus being warped on in by Shuttle. Working on Storm. Interesting. I guess we have seen Storm be used against tanks pretty effectively just because stationary targets that take full damage from Storm are good Storm targets. Even if they don't have... Even if they're not squishy like Marines and Zerglings and Hydralisks are, tanks can still take that full damage, the full amount. And it does help killing them later on. Still coming around the south section here. Spider Mines also scout. They do a little bit. I mean, they do more than just killing stuff. They do provide some sense of where the Protoss army is, at least until they die. First hit, second hit there. Goliath with Carol on the booster. Getting some shots off against our carriers. And behold the blue. This is what I was talking about right now. It's blue from the Carol boosters. It's blue 
from the exploding interceptors too. Really adds up quite nicely here. Fourth base is landing for C. Fourth base is warping in for shuttle. And man, it took a little bit longer than I thought it would. Shields come in. Rest of it comes in. Doing a great big ring around the Rosie, the middle of the map here. Is he just going for the counterattack? Are we going to base race at 15 minutes, you guys? Kind of seems like that's where we're going with this. Shuttle does not want to engage at all. And so C's like, you know what? Fine, my army's a little bit slower than yours, but oh boy, we kind of split the army a bit here, didn't we? Zealots are in. I don't think they have legs. They look a little bit slow here, but Carrier's trying to pick off as many of these Goliaths as they can. He's trying to take off the tanks here too, but that's just too much mech. The shuttle gets wiped out. The army at the front is going nowhere here. The natural base of shuttle is in a ton of trouble. The tanks are present. They have plus two attack and a plus one armor. The carriers are sitting on... I want to say they've got plus two. In fact, they do have plus two. But the natural base is a ghost town. And by golly, that nexus is going to die as well. Coming in to pick off those reinforcements. At least trying to make it happen here. Shuttle is just not looking very good here. He's in full retreat mode, which is bad. He's picking off these tanks at the front door. They are the most immediate threat right now. Let the Goliaths do what, pretty much whatever they want, but wiping out these tanks is definitely what needs to happen for Shuttle to live here. Meanwhile, tanks are taking down this fifth base attempt at the 6 o'clock position that Shuttle is trying to set up. That's not going very well for the Protoss player either. So by golly, C looks like he understands PVT pretty well, you guys. He is just sitting in here with all the confidence in the world, trying to get shots off on the bodies of the carriers as best he can, but he's also happy to kill interceptors as necessary, or as he's able to do so. And one carrier goes down. The target firing is working pretty well here. They're trying to use that high ground, but they're just sneaking over the edge a little bit too far, but I think there are enough carriers here to actually defend. The fifth base goes down to those tanks pretty much unopposed, and C is forced to retreat here, but... He's able to hold on to his fourth base. He's got a whole ton of more Goliaths coming on in. He's working on plus three attack as well as plus two armor, making eight Goliaths at a time. Dark Templar in the mix. High Templar coming in here too. So Shuttle's not going down without a fight here. He's going to try to get some Storm off on those Goliaths and on those tanks. Maybe some DT sneakins to take down some of these bases. The problem with going DT though is that there are already missile turrets up in all of these bases because they're worried about getting harassed by carriers. And turrets help with that pretty immensely. So Carrier Fleet is currently 8. Uh, with Are we done with Carriers? Kind of seems like we might be done making Carriers. There's a lot of Dragoons, a lot of Storm here. Maybe, maybe hoping that C overcommits on Goliaths and then his ground army can do more work. Fifth base now coming up at the bottom right-hand corner. First C, that does get scouted by an Observer though. And this is what I'm talking about, right? The Carriers show up at one of your expansions and you're like, I'm not there yet. Missile turrets hold down the fort. Is it going to work, though? I don't know. Trying to wipe out some of these tanks so that the actual ground army can get in here and do some stuff, too. All the tanks are gone. I think this base might actually go down, you guys. This command center really should be focused. Dragoons are standing in and fighting against these Goliaths. They have the plus one attack and as well as plus one shields, which is an upgrade shared by buildings and all other units in Brood War, which is pretty good for Protoss, man. They get an upgrade that applies to every single thing they have. We don't see it a whole lot, but if you're going this combination of air and ground, it's a really good upgrade to have. Man, these tanks are getting wiped out a little bit here. There are some serious attacks coming in from the high ground, though, on the Goliaths right now. And actually hitting south of the big portion of his army is C. He feels like, sure, I might have lost this base, but he can handle everything out. Zealots are trying to get on top of these Goliaths, but there are enough tanks remaining. Oh, good storm on those SEVs, though. Why are there SEVs mining in the middle of this battle? It's not a good look at all. The natural base canceled again. Shuttle's not able to hold on to this natural base. The army gets right inside his main, which is super, super bad news. 163 to 163 supply. This game is a close one. Goliaths and tanks unopposed here inside uh, Shuttle's main. What is going on right now? C lost a base. Also, DT did take down the attempt to get a fifth base in the bottom right here by C. Engineering Bay gets focused down. I guess that means it's harder to build more uh, more missile turrets. 8-5 Dark Templar being produced at a time right now. Is he making them here? He's got to be making them here. This one, not going to get out. I think others are going to show up. Oh, but the preemptive scan. Are you kidding? He scanned before those DTs came out. How did he know? 
See, that was disgusting. That was a great, great play, man. Carrier does go down. That's the sound of one dying here. But wiping out an entire base of Cs is not bad. Look who's trying to expand in the middle. C is. I always say nobody tries to expand here. Nobody ever tries to take this base. But C feels like he's confident enough, man. He's wiping out gateways. He's wiping out stargates. Taking on robotics facilities here, too. I mean, yeah, he's really just kind of keeping shuttle in this one spot. At least for the past two or three minutes. More and more Goliaths being produced, more the spider mines getting tossed down, recognizing the ground army is a little bit bigger maybe than it otherwise would be here. It's not just Mass Carrier. Yeah, plus three attack is done for these Goliaths and these tanks. They're just wasting away all these production facilities for Shuttle. It does not look good. Shuttle's actually supply blocked here too pretty heavily. There were a lot of pylons in his main, as it turns out. Goliaths in here. Actually, are they going to focus down some of these High Templar? A couple of them do go down before the Vultures all, Vultures all get wiped out there. But yeah, he's just letting his base die. He's letting his main die entirely right now. Look at this middle base being held. This is what I'm talking about, though. It's hard to hold it, hold it forever, though. But you know what? He's got enough army defending it to where it looks like... I don't know. Great storms on those tanks, though. Great storms on those tanks, and suddenly it's 152 to 125 supply, and shuttle is up. The storms doing some serious work. High Templar in the front, trying to storm some Goliaths who walk right through the flames and right through the electricity. There. You know what? It's looking okay right now for shuttle. The army that wiped out his main bases here. It's getting stormed there as well. Oh my gosh, the storms are amazing from Shuttle. Holy cannoli. That was incredible. Suddenly it's 122 to 72 supply. How is this even happening right now? Remember what I said about holding this middle base and how it's really hard? It's really hard. Nobody ever holds it for much time unless they're way ahead. And C is not way ahead right now. He's a three baser. Again, Shuttle really is only mining off of one. Well, two bases now. He did manage to take a fifth or a sixth up along this left side the left side belongs to him and that's it wow gg and c taps out and shuttle is your winner in 22 minutes and 23 seconds are you kidding me right now that was insane i don't man have i ever seen a game where a player loses their entire main yet wins the game two minutes later because that's what happened. Shuttle lost his entire main. Okay, he still had some stuff back here, but it wasn't producing anything for him at all. A lot of it, some of it was unpowered. This one, this one Artosis pylon hanging out, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's got a ton of idle probes here. He's only, only mining off of two bases. But the fact that he's able to take down this fourth base of C's and prevent him from getting a fifth in the bottom right. And the fact that he had a ton of storm. He had so much storm. That is the most storm I have ever seen in a PVT. I've seen some storm before, but that was a ton of storm right on top of the tanks, right on top of the Goliaths, who have to stand in and fight because the carriers are a problem. And in the end there, 10 kills, 12 kills, 13 kills, 14 kills, and 14 kills on these on these carriers. Okay, three. That guy's a slacker, but he's probably new. Yeah, what a fantastic display of how to beat a Terran player in TVP. Nicely done. Nicely done. Storm, Dragoons, Zealots, Carriers. That was the composition. No Arbiters today. We're not going to hide anything. No need to do so. We're going to storm the crap out of everything that can't move. Storm those Goliaths. They don't have a lot of HP either. And just win some major engagements. Wipe out a base or two. Be extremely patient. Man, he spent his he took his time up here at the 12 o'clock holding on to that base. He really did. And it paid off in a big, big way. Beautiful. Beautiful indeed. All right, cool. Let's check out that final score. And we'll get the heck out of here. Overall score, 173,000 for Shuttle, 156 from C. Produced, killed, and lost is actually pretty even across the board. This was a good match. This was a really, really close match here. Look at that. 232 Terran units got lost, and 230 Protoss units were lost. That is like a one to, exactly one-to-one -one ratio. A lot of buildings killed here by C, but that's not enough to win it. And the resources here, pretty darn even too. There was more gas mined by the Terran. A few more minerals mined here by the Protoss. And then overall total spent was about 3,000 more for the Protoss. So that's a lot of High Templar as it turns out. And a couple more carriers. But I think it was just positioning. It was just getting some gorgeous, gorgeous storms off. While everybody's worried about the carriers. 
and the vulture count wasn't that high. Just getting right in there, sacrificing their life, taking tank shots, but making it work in the end. Oh, amazing. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right. Well, cool. That's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. I'll go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.